There's the magic sound. So we're live. Lesson two, red piece of paper, polynomial review. And I think I said to you, normally I have the workbook notes, we'll use those. This is just some quick review to brush the cobwebs off. Again, I'm going to assume we're at the lowest common denominator. I'm going to assume you've forgotten everything with the understanding probably most of you haven't. And that means this lesson can go pretty quick. I hope, I think, I hope. So once again, we're going to jump right into this. The instructions are just going to say simplify. Simplify is one of those math words that means a lot of things. To me, what it means is get rid of brackets, tidy it up, and write it as short as possible. Simplify. Are you new to my class? I forgot to do attendance. Hang on here. Silly me. Pause. Here we go. Simplify. I expect you've been doing this since grade 9. Multiplying polynomials and gathering like terms. So in your homework, you're going to have some stuff like, uh, oh, um, er, how about this? Example 1. Oh, give me a pen. Example 1. Six a squared bracket a squared plus three a minus nine. What did we call this? If you had Mr. Rocca, you called it front door bomber or something like that. Anyways, get rid of brackets, distribute whatever phrase works for you, however you want to remember it. I'm totally good with that. I think I told you I almost always take the one second to do that because it gets rid of most of my silly mistakes. Uh, 6a squared times a squared. What is 6a squared times a squared? Well, when we're multiplying letters and variables, it's multiply numbers by numbers. What's the number in front here? It's invisible. Invisible 1. So 6 times 1. 6. What's a squared times a squared? A to the fourth. What's six times positive three? Sorry? And I say to myself, positive 18. It reminds me to put a plus sign there. And what's a squared times a? A cubed. And that's a 9, not an A. Let me make that a little more obvious by going like that. So it sort of looks like a 9. Now it looks like a G. Shut up. Um, 6A squared times negative 9. Numbers times numbers. 6 times negative 9, I'm pretty sure, is negative 36. And the A squared. That's what I said. Can't you read my writing? Is my writing that bad? I should be able to get that. And then the last thing, once you've done getting rid of brackets, double check, are there any like terms in my answer that I can gather? No, I can't add a fourths to a cubes to a squareds. Well, you guys handled that faster than I planned. Let's pick up the pace a little bit. Example two. Five x squared y cubed times negative three x y squared minus four x squared y squared z plus six x squared y squared. I think out of all the mathematical operations, Emily, if you know your times tables, Multiplying is the easiest of the mathematical operations because it's much more straight memorizing than anything else. I make far more sloppy mistakes when I'm adding and subtracting than when I'm multiplying. So here we have multiplying some polynomials. Again, it's going to be that. I think I told you last day, if I ever draw a Z, by the way, I'll put a line through it so you know it's not a 2 because my writing is that bad. Anyone want to talk me through this? Sure, Marcus, you twitched. 
numbers by numbers. So 5 times negative 3 is. I totally agree with that. x squared times x is. y cubed times y squared is. Done. Move on to the next term. Keep going. 5 times negative 4 negative 20, and I say that in my mind to remember to put the negative there, the minus sign. x squared times x squared, x to the fourth. y cubed times y squared, y to the fifth. No z's times one z, I think just a single solitary z. Last one, positive 5 times positive 6, positive 30. x squared times x squared, x to the fourth. y cubed times y squared, y to the fifth. Double check, are there like terms anywhere? I thought these were like, no, this has got a z, this doesn't. So I think that's as simplified as it'll get. more we're done that was where you started in grade nine when you learned the distribution principle front door bomber uh, when you learn that if you have terms in the brackets and a number in front it's multiplying everything inside the brackets then they kick things up a notch something like this they still have something in brackets but in front they put two things. Instead of one thing in front of the brackets, it's two things in front of the brackets. And the rule is still the same. Sierra. Sorry, I'm trying to come up with names. Um, the rule is still the same. It's still everything in front times everything in the back. Although I think they give you an acronym to help you remember so you don't miss anything. We call it, call it, we call it FOIL. Okay? And that's become so ubiquitous that we often just refer to everything as FOIL, even though technically FOIL is only two terms times two terms. I, again, just do this. I had a teacher, though, who used to do it this way. Don't write this down, but it was a good way to remember. He would go like that, like that, like that, and like that. And then he'd put a little I right there, a little I right there, and there's your happy face. And he would say, let George do it, was always his acronym. He would taught us in grade 8 to draw a little happy face. I guess I should put the I's there. There, there's the happy face. It's still FOIL. Whatever way you want to do it, it's everything in the front times everything in the back. However, in your prime, some of you in grade 9 and 10, might have been able to do these in your head showing no work. Go ahead. This first one, I am going to show all my work. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times positive 4. I got to disagree. 12x. Negative 5 times 2x, negative 10x. Negative 5 times positive 4, negative 20. And then you have like terms to gather. 6x squared, I have a 12x minus a 10x. I'm pretty sure that's a positive 2x minus 20. Try one more. If you want to do it in your head, go ahead. Example 4. 2x plus 7. 5x minus 1. Am 
my right? I did it all in my head. I could be wrong. Double check. People are looking funny. Am I right? Yeah. Oh. Everything in the front times everything in the back gathered like terms. How many of you got that? Been doing that since grade nine. The one they introduce in grade 10 is this. Hopefully two more and I'm nearly done. In grade 10, so grade nine, they go two terms times two terms. In grade 10, they go two terms times three terms. Two x plus seven in brackets, and then three x squared plus four x plus five in brackets. And you can call this FOIL if you want to. It's I mean the acronym doesn't work. Here's what I remember. It's very simple. Sam, I just remember everything in the front times everything in the back. And I go systematically. I go the first term times all three. And then because it gets crowded, I do the last term times all three, but I draw these loops underneath just so it's not so crowded. Just me. You don't have to do it that way, but over the years. So you ready? I'm going to go real systematic. I'm going to get rid of the loops and draw them as I go so I can make sure I catch them all. It's going to be first terms times first term. Sam, what is 2x times 3x squared? I totally agree. And then it's going to be first times second what is 2x times 4x? I totally agree. What is 2x times positive 5? Yet again, I totally agree. And then, keep going, kiddo. 7 times 3x squared? I agree. Are there like terms we can gather? Okay. Again, I'm not sure how much your teacher taught you to write when you're gathering like terms. Some teachers prefer the kids to rewrite everything in order. I've already told you my goal this year is intelligent, safe, but lazy at the same time. So Danielle, if I was gathering like terms, I would say let's start with the biggest exponent. Are there any other x cubed anywhere? I would write it and then I cross it out just to let myself know I took care of those. Then I'll do all the x squareds. I have a positive 8x squared. I have a positive 21x squared. Danielle, what is 8x squared plus 21x squared? And I would cross those out to remind myself that I'd taken care of those ones. This is how, this is how I make sure I don't miss any, right? Danielle, keep going. What's 10x and 28x? Yep. Are you doing the math in your head? Good. Yeah, sure. And I got one term left. It drops down like a domino. Boston is every term crossed out. That's my built-in, hey, I don't think I missed anything. If they get longer especially, then I get more systematic. We used to, in the old curriculum, do three terms times three terms, trinomial times trinomial. Then you really had to be organized, but I still didn't want to write 20 lines. I want to see if I could still do it two, maybe three lines. So that's kind of our goal. Okay, how many got that? Okay. That's the lesson, really. Quick review of algebra. So, what's your homework? Oh, they're, like, they're bad, they're terrible. First of all, you have the uh, equation solving review number three. You can still work on that one.